All right, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to discuss Private Internet Access, which is a service that works very well with open VPN software. I use this service myself, and this gives me a lot of peace of mind when I take my computer out to a public Wi-Fi hotspot, and there are plenty other reasons why you should consider using a VPN or virtual private network. So I'm going to cover those reasons, and I'm going to show you how to set it up right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's get started. First, let's go ahead and open up our web browser here. And this is their website. There will be a link in the show notes. All right, now you're going to see here on the website, basically this uh, gives you some information on why you would want to use a virtual private network. And I'll give you a great example because this is something that I've had a number of complaints on. As many of you know, we have the Mumble Chat server at uh, Cup of Linux stuff mumble.me. But we had a number of people that stated that uh, they were unable to connect from European countries. And by using a VPN, I was able to tunnel through other countries like England. I was able to uh, go through Sweden and Norway and other places around the globe so that I could try and connect to the Mumble server to see if I could get in and effectively have a voice conversation. And this was a wonderful method which would allow me to make sure that worldwide uh, access is available to my uh, subscribers and viewers who wish to come in and participate. Other reasons that could be beneficial, for instance, let's say you, like me, you like to take your laptop with you uh, to Starbucks or McDonald's, wherever there's free Wi-Fi, and be able to surf the Internet. Well, unfortunately, it's not very secure because anybody can uh, eavesdrop on any information that you're typing in and transmitting transmitting uh, through plain text uh, to the Internet. And that's something you really don't want. And using a virtual private network uh, will allow you to tunnel that information in secure packets so that nobody can eavesdrop on what it is that you're doing. And another thing you could do, and I know this is something bene beneficial from my standpoint, is that Many Internet service providers don't want you sharing files that you create yourself via BitTorrent because many people do uh, use BitTorrent for illicit, illegal activities. But if you're a content creator such as myself, this is a wonderful means for getting your imp getting, you know, content that you've created to share with other people. And so uh, many Internet service providers really frown on the use of BitTorrent clients. And when you have a virtual uh, private network enabled, your Internet service provider can't see what kind of data that it is that you're sending and receiving because it's all encrypted. And I mean, I can go on ad infinitum all of the possible benefits that they have. But the thing is, if you view this page here, under why, you will see that there are a number of things here that it describes. You can hide your IP. You can browse anonymously. You can um, public Wi-Fi with security. I just mentioned that. Uh, identity protection. So now you can uh, do your uh, shopping online and not worry about somebody stealing your credit card. How cool is that? And I mean, this is an excellent value that could accompany your, uh, your, even your home networking plan that you're already paying for through your ISP just by adding this on. You get that added layer of protection and peace of mind. And uh, I've done a lot of research online on who some of the best providers were. And uh, private internet Access.com came highly recommended. I tried it out myself. You're going to see there is a little uh, box here on the lower right, and I just want to take this time to uh, thank the representatives that were there. I, I think it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I was trying to set up a, my uh, first VPN through this, and I believe the names were uh, Shannon and uh, Gregory who tried to assist me. And if I got your names wrong, I do apologize. But i got to tell you what, kids. These people provide top-notch support 
24-7. I think the longest I had to wait for an answer was about two minutes. So, I mean, it really wasn't that bad. So they're very, very friendly on here. They'll help you get everything rolling and that sort of thing. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our tutorial on how to set this up. Now, uh, you're going to notice right here, uh, I have my Wi-Fi set up. And if I right, if I uh, left click on my Wi-Fi, you're going to see I have uh, two VPN uh, connections, one to Canada and one to England. Uh, and these are just examples that I set up. So all I have to do is I can just press on England here. And basically, my icon is going to flash for a few seconds while it's making a secure transaction. And then it takes about 30 to 60 seconds before it comes fully active. And what will happen is now, uh, basically, I'm tunneling to England. And so if I were to uh, go and uh, click on my home page here, you're going to see that when it logs in, it, for those of you who are watching in high def, you will see that it says that I'm using Google UK. So uh, it's it, it believes that I'm actually in the United Kingdom of all places. And, and I just set this up as an example. And what I'm going to show you how to do is very, very easy to do. Something I want to point out, though, the representatives felt that they only support Ubuntu, and I'm going to prove you wrong right now. Actually, you support any Linux distribution that uses the NM-applet. That is this icon here. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And I'm running an Arch-based system. And uh, basically, you just want to make sure that you have OpenVPN installed. Now, if you're running Manharo, it, it's already included in there. But the thing is, if you are running Ubuntu, you may need that. Let's uh, go ahead. I'm just going to type in Yaourt. Open VPN. All right, and you will see that it is installed here in my listing. So I have Open VPN and then Network Manager dash Open VPN. Both of these packages are installed. All right, so let's go ahead and close this here. And let's go ahead and pull up those Ubuntu instructions because I followed these same exact instructions on their website. And it was very, very easy to figure out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is you're going to scroll down on the front page here. And you just click on this penguin or this icon with all the operating systems. Okay, and then uh, since we're using Linux, we're not even going to download the client. We don't need it because we're going to use OpenVPN for this. So we're going to click on the Ubuntu 1204 OpenVPN How To. All right, and here it is. All right, so basically you're going to need to make sure that you have uh, the OpenVPN software installed. They have an installer already, but the thing is, you can just search your repositories and find it easily. So just, uh, that would be uh, sudo apt get installed OpenVPN. And that should get you what you want. And then you would need to connect using the network manager, which, which is that icon in your uh, task manager here. Okay, and then it says, um, uh, for here it's saying running sudo apt get install open VPN network manager tack open VPN network manager tack open VPN gnome. This listing may vary based upon your distribution. Just make sure that you, in my case, all I had to have was open VPN and open VPN Network Manager installed, or Network Manager dash Open VPN. My bad, but it may vary depending on what distribution you are running. So just make just keep this in mind that you have these applications installed, and then once installed, open System Settings and then go to Network. Well, in our case, what we're going to do is we're just going to right click on our connector because we already have NM Applet running. Okay, and uh, if you install NM Applet and that sort of thing, basically you would need to go into your system and session and startup or its equivalent based on whatever desktop you are running. Uh, let me go into, I'll just click the settings here, and then uh, I'm going to go into session and startup here. All right, and then under uh, startup here, 
under Application Auto Start, you will see that I have the NM applet installed and uh, da, 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 I need to, oh, there it is right here. So I have network here and that the command that it issues to run it is nm dash applet. Let's go ahead and close this. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this icon and uh, or left click, I should say, and then go into VPN and I'm just going to uh, disconnect the VPN temporarily because we're going to set up a new one. All right, so you got everything installed. We're all ready to rumble here. All right. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to right click on this icon here and then select edit connections. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to press add. And then you want to select under VPN, open VPN. Then press create. Now, your gateway is where you want this to connect to. Now, um, they have a page here, and this link will be in the description, which will tell you um, all of the items that are available here. You can connect to one of the U.S. servers if you wish. Uh, Canada, the U.K., um, uh, and a bunch of other countries. I should be putting my glasses on because I can't even read my screen. I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. Okay, let's see what we've got here. All right, so we have uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, uh, France, Germany, Romania, and Hong Kong, although Hong Kong doesn't look like they have that many servers. So, But the thing is, those options are available to you, especially if you have uh, if you have content on the Internet that's restricted to your country and your country only, and you're staying here in the United States, and you still want to be able to access that content. This is another good reason why you'd want to have a VPN. So you pick the one you want, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the Chicago server just for laughs and giggles here. I'm going to right-click and copy on this. Okay, and then we're going to go in here, and we're going to right-click and paste it. Now, there's also a file you're going to need to download to uh, have a certificate. Okay, and... There is an instruction here that says this zip file. You will need to extract it somewhere uh, where it isn't going to accidentally get deleted. I've already done this, uh, so you'll see this link in the uh, in the instructions. And just follow along with these. Okay, so what you're going to do is under type, you're going to select password. Okay, you're going to navigate to where that certificate is installed, and it's ca.crt. Okay. All right, you're going to put in your username that they assign to you, and that will be in the email that they send you. Okay, and then under IPv4 settings, you want to put in additional DNS server. Now, the friendly staff at privateinternetaccess.com gave me two DNS servers with which to add. Now, they also gave me the option of using OpenDNS because I had some problems connecting, and uh, they suggested this one. So I've got these. This link will the this information will also be in the description at cupoflinux.com. I'm going to copy these, okay? And then I'm going to go into additional DNS servers, and I'm going to right click and paste them. Basically, it's two IP address ranges with a comma in between them. You can try using the Open DNS servers. I will include those as well. You can try them out, but your mileage may vary. Also, one other thing, we need to go back into the VPN setting under Advanced. You must make sure that uh, Use LZO Data Compression is enabled. Okay? All right, and then once everything is done, press Save. And you will see now that I have three of these. I have England, Canada, and then VPN Connection 1. Of course, when you set this up, you could name it anything you want to. I didn't bother naming it just so that I could be able to spot this. Now that I'm connected to the Internet, why don't we connect to this server? So I can just right-click on this now, or I'm sorry, left-click, and then uh, under VPN Connections, I can select VPN Connection 1. This is going to tunnel me to Chicago servers. Okay, it's going to blink and flash for a moment, and then the lock icon will appear once I have been uh, successfully logged in. Something else I forgot to mention is when setting this up, you will want to 
select automatic VPN addresses only. Instead of automatic VPN, you want that as automatic VPN addresses only. And of course, you can change the name. So let's call this Chicago. Okay, it appears that Chicago is not responding, so let's go ahead and pick another server out of the listing here. And by the way, in the instructions here, um, on the uh, there's a link to the network page in these instructions, so yeah. So let's go ahead and pick out another server, because apparently uh, that is not responding. So what we can do is uh, we can just go into Edit Connections here. Uh, let's go ahead down into VPN where it says Chicago. Let's edit this, and uh, let's change this to something else in the listing here. Uh, why don't we try uh, Florida? Since I'm in Florida, that's pretty close to where I'm at, so I'm going to right-click and copy this. And then I'm going to paste this in here. Okay, and I'm going to rename this to Florida. I had somebody else mention they had an issue with connecting to Chicago today as well, so uh, maybe there might be something going on with the servers. But that's the thing. There's so many different choices for servers you can connect to on this. So, All right, so let's go ahead and then um, left-click in the VPN connections, and now we'll select Florida. And let's see if this will connect us. So now that we are connected to our VPN and we have Florida selected. I want to go to speedtest.net okay and now I want to run a speed test and of course this is going to say that I am well, let's go ahead and start here apparently it's saying I'm in Tampa when I connected to Miami, which is pretty interesting, but I'm interested in seeing uh, what kind of speeds I can come to expect. A 30 millisecond ping, not too bad. Okay, and then download speed. Whoa! Off the charts there. Look at that. So I'm getting a super fast download speed here on this, which I think is really cool. And then it's going to give us an upload speed test. Now, your mileage may actually vary depending on which servers you connect to. For instance, when I was uh, downloading uh, from London, I was averaging eh, right in the uh, 12 mark here, which is still great for streaming video privately and that sort of thing. But I'll tell you, the service is pretty quick, you know, because I didn't lose any speed where upload is concerned. It's the exact same as if I wasn't using a uh, virtual private network. And the download speed, well, it's going to vary a little bit here and there. If you thought this was useful, please comment at cupoflinux.com. That's where I'll be happy to answer all of your questions on this. And then, of course, Another way you can support this show is by clicking the banner that you will see at cupoflinux.com. Here is the banner uh, that I have uh, put up. Uh, for If you click that banner, it will take you to a private Internet Access's website, and it will go with a special link. That way, you'll be helping me out, and all of the commission I earn from anybody who signs up for this will go back into this show and, of course, cupoflinux.com. So you're not only helping me out, but you would also be helping yourself out. This is a great service to have for those of you who value your privacy. Well, that's all I have for now. Peace out. Mm -hmm.